Okay, so today we are in the Spec Racer Ford at uh, the um, track in Brazil. It's Autodromo Jose Carlos Passe or something. Um, basically, the Brazilian Formula One track you may have seen on TV in races. Uh, so we'll just do a, a lap around the track just to show what's going on here. So here we are down the front straight into turn one. We have a chicane here. It goes downhill, kind of off camber. Um, and leads on to another straightaway. Uh, get slightly better camera angle here. Um, leads, leads on to this straightaway. So both those turns are a little difficult that we've gone through there. Uh, let's back it up a tad. So, okay, we're back on the front straight, coming back into these turns again. So braking here is pretty important. Uh, getting the braking just right, getting turned down in. You kind of want to be on the inside curb here. Turn quickly back to the right and use up all that curb so you can be fully on the throttle as you come onto here. I like to keep it pretty tight on top of the curbs too, but it doesn't really seem to be that important to be that far inside. Um, we have a long straightaway here, again, important for drafting. And then you come in, this is a kind of a tricky turn. You got to brake hard, downshift twice, inside tires on the inside curb, drift it all the way to the outside, uh, but not too far, because you'll get an incident if you get over that little curb there, it's really easy to do. Here, we break a little, and, and we can downshift here if you time it just right. Back on the throttle hard. Try to keep it on the track to the outside here. Downshift again. We could use a little more curb. That wasn't the greatest turn there. This is tricky. This is a cambered kind of slow turn. Getting back on the throttle hard. Oh, we didn't get our whole lap in. Uh, that wasn't the greatest demo lap. But there's a, another tight hairpin that leads on the front straight, and that tight hairpin is uh, an important one to get right. Uh, looks like we're lining up here for the race. And so we, um, I put a wheel off in both my qualifying laps. Um, I was probably going to abort the qualifying laps anyway, but um, I try to keep them as uh, realistic as possible and push as, as hard as I normally would. So anyway, we're starting 10th. There's a variety of uh, skill level in this uh, field. And so here we're getting ready for the start here. And uh, we've got a few seconds probably until we get into the start. A uh, variety of skill levels, uh, a good range. And so the guys near the back should be a little easier to get around. The guys in the front, uh, not quite so much. Um, so this should be fun. Done a couple races this week on this track, and so got a little bit of experience here. The track temp is 98. I think we're getting ready. So I'm trying to get my launches better. I've been working on the clutch bite point, and I think I got it pretty decent. Got a tiny bit of wheel spin, but not much. And you can see that really helps us get a good launch. So I decided to dive it up the inside. Switch camera angles here so we can see a little better at the beginning. Um, so we got by like about four cars there right at the at the start by getting a great launch. So now we are slotted into sixth here. I made an emphatic move to the left just to uh, try to convince the guy in front of me not to not to block. Sometimes if you drift over slowly, they just kind of come with you. Uh, so I make an emphatic move. So he would have to make an emphatic move if he was going to block it. You can see kind of different lines, different braking uh, going on there. The lead car there locked up under braking. Now we're getting some side-by-side -side action by, out of the the two leaders there. Things are pretty dicey on the first lap. People are trying to take every advantage they can. Since you got a couple cars close close by, you can try to grab a position pretty, pretty easily um, if you can make it work. Uh, but it's sketchy to do because uh, cold tires, everybody else is thinking the same. They may not see you in your mirror, in the mirrors. 
they may see you and think they can convince you to not make the move if they chop down. And you're also not quite sure how some people take different turns. Maybe that's just the way that guy takes that turn and you take it differently. So you don't have a lot of experience yet racing against this particular crowd when you're in lap one, lap two. I mean, your front tires are, your, your, all your tires are still kind of coming up to temperature. So you're going to have a little bit more of a push. The rear, the rear if it slides, isn't going to catch as quickly. So I got by that uh, three car. Now looking to see if I can get by this, this seven car here. Yeah, I don't know exactly how he's going to take that turn. So I got to kind of give him a little extra room. And then he took that room and kind of more uh, taking those turns differently. And the leader spins but recovers so now got these two guys side by side so they're slowing each other down a little bit but I also got a car not too far behind me that I gotta keep an eye on too you can see we take some interesting lines through that turn using all of the track using a really wide entry because it's a really tight turn. Optimistic. Here, I could have gone in between those guys. I, I I should have, in hindsight. I thought it would maybe bump drafting, but then I realized it was a, the track is turning a little bit there. Here, I decided to bump draft a little bit, but um, I just don't really want to go four wide. And I could hear that two car coming up behind me, like right on the side of me. I really didn't want to put four wide going into turn one. That just seemed like a recipe for disaster. These guys touched a little bit. That two car went wide. Again, decisive move to the right. I, and since I couldn't get all the way to the inside because that car was there, I had to slow down a little more. I got an off-track um, incident for, for getting onto the painted area there. But still kind of battling back from, uh, from that line. So running side by side is quite tough because you got to change your line. Uh, you got to break a little earlier, turn a little less or more, depending on um, if you're on the inside or the outside of that turn. You're getting on the throttle a little bit differently. And the other person's got to give you the room, or they should. If you're giving them the room, you know, it's it's a give and take. So again, we didn't get the greatest uh, exit of, out of that uh, kind of tight hairpin that leads onto the front straight because we had a car to our inside. So that seven gets a pretty good run. And this next other car, what is this? The two car gets a great run as well. Now we're going three wide down the front straight away. And at this point, this is kind of not where I want to be right in the middle of two cars going into turn one. Uh, luckily the guy on the inside sort of uh, thought better of it. So that was kind of interesting. Let's let's back that up and take a look at how that happened there. Ah. So we'll go chase view. All right. So we can't really see this well of exactly where the cars are next to us. We know that they're somewhere. Um, so we come into turn one here. Break at about the 50 marker sign. Hard, hard braking, downshift three times. Uh, get all four tires up on that uh, or all four tires on the inside curve. And then I need to quickly turn back to the right. I like to be where this two car is that far uh, to the right there to um, get more of your turning done.
before you get to the exit of this turn, uh, but couldn't quite do that. But also didn't want to give too much space to this two car because then we wouldn't be able to exit this turn nearly as quickly. So um, squeezing them a little bit uh, so we can't use all that track and so we can get a better exit here. And that's the idea there. And you can see as we come out of this turn, he's got to lift a little bit when, when he first started coming out of it because we were there and he did. So that little lift from his side where we're flat out on the throttle gives us this, this run that we got now. Um, so let's change the camera angle here and see. So now we finally got a little bit of a gap. We got about a half second gap. And uh, coming into this turn, I looked in the mirrors and I didn't quite get my braking done, quite enough braking done, lost the rear end on entry and uh, had, to, had to save the car, had to catch it and ran off track to do that and lost four spots, maybe five spots here, saving the car. Um, so that was unfortunate. But, oh, he did not need to, uh, not sure why, decided to pinch us off on the exit right there. That's not really a place he needed to go. trying to hit our marks perfectly. This car's bouncing around a little bit in front of us. He kind of hopped on the inside curbs, trying to keep my momentum here. And I outbraked myself right there. So normally, normally our braking marker is, uh, it's a little hard to see from this point of view, but it's right here. There's a rubber mark on this grass crete and that's normally where I'd hit the brakes. Um, see if I can switch cameras and maybe pick it up. All right. So we want to be farther to the right where this three car is, is where we really want to be. And that four car right now is basically on top of our braking marker. That's where we'd normally want to hit the brakes and hit them hard and then have this wide arc into this um, this final uh, hairpin here, but I didn't do that. Uh, I was out of position here and I didn't adjust appropriately to back up my braking marker and hit the brakes sooner. So I hit the brakes right about the same spot, but my turn is tighter turn uh, than normal. And so I just can't quite make it and probably panicked a little bit and got too hard on the brakes and locked up. So let's see if we see what our braking percentage is here. You can see it's like 80% right here, and it peaks up to about 90 right there. And so we're locked up. We locked up the front wheels at this point. The front wheels are sliding, and I'm trying to get them to catch off the brakes, off the brakes, trying to get them to catch. I'm turning the wheel, but it's just not really catching. Now it finally starts to catch. The front tires start to catch traction, but it's too late. And so off we go. So then now it's just sort of uh, maintenance throttle over here just to try to keep the car uh, uh, headed the right direction and back towards the track, counter steering a little bit because the track is, um, the, the, the it's off balance over here, off camber where we're running. And so just trying not to spin it and get back on the track safely. And uh, we lost a ton of spots. So that wasn't great. So let's see where we are here position wise. We are in uh, 10th now. So I think we we're in first like a lap and a half ago or something. Uh, and now we're over here fighting for 10th. And we have another off. So let's analyze this one. So we had gone off back there. The 12 car saw that and, and passed us here. Uh, but we're coming here to pass them back. So let's see how that happens exactly. So, all right, this should be a decent angle. Okay, so we are drafting them down the straightaway. And as we come down the straightaway, we're coming back to the uh, 50 marker, get on the brakes hard, come on the inside here, um, downshifting twice, uh, pulling onto this inside curb. Oh, he's starting to squeeze. We could see it. 
and gives us no room. Uh, so there's all this track, all this track over here from this edge of the paint to this white line. Uh, and I'm passing him on the inside. Surely sees me in the mirrors or the big rear view mirror or something, but still decides to turn left, even though there's a car to his inside. And he would have heard there's a car to his inside at least about here, but he would have seen it in the mirrors um, before that, that I was coming. Uh, so coming here, under braking, trying to leave him as much space as possible out there. Realizing here at this point of, uh-oh, this guy's turning in on us. Keeping it all on the curbs. Look, I'm all on the paint. All four tires on the paint. Uh, but I guess that wasn't enough track space. And so uh, he pinched us off there. Not sure if that's uh, on purpose or lack of presence or brain fart or what. But I wasn't really happy about that. So now we're getting it spun back around, get going again. Thanks, dude. When there's a car on your left, uh, don't go left on the curb. Uh, Pro tip. So, uh, yeah. Let's skip ahead. Uh, this is lap six. Oh, I think we had somebody there next to us. I thought I saw something. Uh, oh, here we go. Lap seven. Okay, something's maybe happening here. So we have kind of a similar situation a little bit. Passing a car. Coming up the inside. Getting to our braking. Getting our downshifting in. Tires on the curb. Cranking back to the right. Back on throttle hard. So uh, let's skip ahead again. We're on lap nine. Oh. oh, interesting. So this is lap 10. It looks like that same 10 car is still uh, right nearby. It's like we had an accidental bump or something there. Uh, he sh dives it in there. And loops it around. I remember this now. So let's watch this. So we're coming in here. He's already smoking a tire. He, he uh, smoking the left front a little bit. Um, over there, you see some more smoke. Uh, so he's overshooting his braking. He's locking it up. Not getting the car turned as much as he needs to. We're getting our car turned basically like normal. Um, and so he goes sliding off the track. He's just carrying too much speed. The, just, the, the tires can't hold uh, that much speed going through that turn. And so he turns it more, but the, the front end's just sliding. And so now he gets all four tires onto the grass, the rears especially, and loses the rear end, but keeps on the throttle. And uh, I just didn't react quickly enough uh, to try to get out of the way of that. It's pretty hard. You kind of can't see it from the in-car view if we switch to that angle. Um, so from the cockpit, we see him there. And we see him over here on this side. And then I'm not sure. I know i got to make that turn. And I straightened out a little bit, try to give him a little more space. But uh, it just wasn't enough. Um, and also, I'm not sure if I'm just going to kind of get lucky and maybe be able to slide by just before he finishes spinning or he spins this far towards me. But I think him being on the throttle kind of shoots him back onto the track. And so, uh, yeah, that's what happened. Uh, so anyway, uh, now we are going, it's lap 11. Uh, let's see, lap 12. I think we got 14 laps total. Uh, there's lap 13 and 14, there was nobody in front of us. So nothing else interesting really happened. It doesn't look like, or this is the beginning of lap 14. Uh, and then here's the, uh, yeah. So anyway, let's look at the results.
Um, we started 10th and we finished the race 9th. Um, had some fun though. It was, it was definitely fun in the beginning. These guys at the top are good. Uh, and Bob is good. I raced against him a few times. He's definitely uh, much more steady and, and cautious with the way he runs. And it worked out. He got a, he got a third out of it. Um, that's awesome. Um, so it was fun. A little frustrating, but the, the, the first like six laps or so was, was awesome. I had a good time with that. Uh, let's look at our lap times. Uh, let's see here. The fastest lap was lap eight. Uh, that was after we made a mistake, after we went off. I think we went off here on lap five or so. Um, got down to 149, 108. So not super consistent. Um, but, oh well, that was fun. Thanks for watching.